ಓಂ ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೋ ಭುನತ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯ ಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧಿ ತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾ ವಿದ್ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಸೊ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಇನ್ ಟು ಕಠೋಪನಿಷತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಅ ಸಾಲಿಡ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಡೆತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ ವಿಚ್ ರಿಯಲಿ ಗೋಸ್ ಡೀಪ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದ ಇಮಾರ್ಟಾಲಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ದ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಸೋಲ್ ಇನ್ ಟ್ರೈಂಗ್ ಟು ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ ವಾಟ್ ಡೆತ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೊ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಯು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಯು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಇಸಂಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಇಸ್ ವಿದೌಟ್ ದ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಡೆತ್ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸಿ ಯು ಯು ಆ್ಯಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಕಾಂಟ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಯು ಟೇಕ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಫಾರ್ ಗ್ರಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಅನ್ಲೆಸ್ ದೇರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಅ ಸ್ಟಾಪ್ ಟು ಇಟ್ ವಿ ವುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಸಿಗ್ನಿಫಿಕೆನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಡೀಪ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವೈ ದಟ್ಸ್ ದ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಸೀಕ್ರೆಟ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಟು ಅಸ್ ಯು ನೋ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಡೋಂಟ್ ನೋ ವಾಟ್ ಡೆತ್ ಇಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೆನ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ಲಿಮಿಟೆಡ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೈಫ್ ವಿ ವೇಸ್ಟ್ ಆರ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಇನ್ ಸೋ ಮೆನಿ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಎಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಡೆತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಸೋ ಸರ್ಟನ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ದ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಸರ್ಟನ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಲೈಫ್ ದೆನ್ ನ್ಯಾಚುರಲಿ ಯು ಬಿಕಮ್ ವೆರಿ ಸೀರಿಯಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಸೊ ಕಠೋಪನಿಷತ್ ಇಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಗಿವ್ ಅಸ್ ಅ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇನ್ಸೈಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡೆತ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಡ್ವೆಲಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಬಟ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಮಂತ್ರ ಬೈ ಮಂತ್ರ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಐ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಯು ಇಟ್ಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ಟು ಕವರ್ ದ ಎಂಟೈರ್ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ ಇನ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಡೇಸ್ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಡೂ ಇಸ್ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಮಂತ್ರಾಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಅಪ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ದ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯು ನೋ ದೀಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಷಿಯಲ್ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೈಫ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಇಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದೆತ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಸೋಲ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಅನ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಲೈಫ್ ದೆನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ದ ಡ್ಯೂಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಆರ್ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಷಿಯಲ್ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ದ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಫಂಡಮೆಂಟಲ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಯುವರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಸಚ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ರಿ ಯುವರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ರೈಮರಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ನೇಚರ್ ಆಫ್ ದಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೋರ್ ಸೊ ಯು ಸಿ ವೆನ್ ವಿ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ದ ಉಪನಿಷದ್ ದ ದ ವೆರಿ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಯೂಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ವೆರಿ ಐಡಿಯಾಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಿ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ದೇ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಅಟ್ ಅ ಡೀಪರ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಇಸಂಟ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಔಟ್ ಸೈಡ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ ಟು ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಯುವರ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೋರಿ ಬಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಗೋಸ್ ಬಿಯಾಂಡ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ರಿಯಲ್ ಸ್ಟಫ್ ದ ರಿಯಲ್ ಯು ಅಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದ ಉಪನಿಷನ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ನೋ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ನೋ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದೆಮ್ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ ಅಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದೇರ್ ಐಡೆಂಟಿಟೀಸ್ no concept of themselves apart from their identities is this true mm, this is so true in fact personality and identity is self for most people so then all this becomes uh, something uh, you know almost utopian to many minds or at least something very th- theoretical they can't relate with it but the upanishads introduce a process of inquiry and investigation which will help us understand even mind can be objectified even your thought process can be objectified which means there is a subject quite
that is what you are wearing them hmm. then the manomai kosh the mind the vijnana mai kosh the intellect and the anand mai kosh the causal body but you are not the anand mai kosh even you are wearing these five sheets you are quite beyond this you are quite beyond this now why do they give us such a model because they are thoroughly analyzing the elements of your personality and showing you but you are wearing your personality like you wear a mask so many days we were wearing those masks isn't it hmm? like that you are wearing your personality but your con consciousness in its pure bare state of being pure being quite apart from this panchakosha model and using this panchakosha model we can very well define what is life and what is death the expression of the self through the panchakosha model is what you call life and the snapping of the annamai kosh from the rest of you the panchakosha model and the atman is what is called death is this making sense see life means the soul or the self pure consciousness that you are manifesting through this these five sheets through your personality what you, what you today call personality but the personality concept doesn't go beyond body and mind but panchakosha model gives you five five sheets so your the expression of the atman consciousness the filtering you can say of the atman through these five sheets is called life you require all this equipment or wiring to manifest in this world okay and what does death mean death means the snapping only of the annamai kosh the body from the rest of you from the uh, mind from the intellect from the causal body and of course the self so the pranmay kosh does that snapping hmm? where it separates the annamay kosh from the rest of you and that is called death so then you continue to exist so you know for the dying man there is no death only for the onlooker there is death is this making sense for the dying person he knows very well he is moving somewhere we will also analyze this word movement <laughs> so he feels he knows he continues to exist he has left the expression of the body so he is there but but for the onlooker he is gone forever because we think in physical terms isn't it we identify people with their bodies or with their minds both but for the dying man there is no death because his existence is perpetual it is always there there is no doubt about it in his mind because he is there to see he is not in the body you must have heard of near death experiences so many people have experienced this and come back to tell the story so you see this is not a you know a conjecture it's not speculation it is uh, based on solid facts and uh, scientific facts that you can experience a certain distance from your body in our own lifetime we do it many times but we forget it or we don't analyze it we don't pay much attention to it and you can distance yourself from your mind also which means there's something about you which is quite apart from body mind complex but you are functioning through it body is yours mind is yours but you are not the body and mind see this is a very very important idea unique to the upanishadic literature hmm? so when you continue when the body falls and you continue where do you continue this is the next question what continues i told you the rest of you continues the annamai kosh the body falls that is now going to be going to the cremation ground whatever wherever but you continue now where do you continue so the the popular uh, uh, religions always the the dwaita philosophy will say there are worlds of sojourn there are different lokas you must have heard of the, all this hmm? according to your karma you go to those particular lokas so if you have great uh, positive karma you will go to the heavens 
swa what is called hmm? and there you exhaust the merits of your actions and then you come back so it's again a temporary place kind of thing and if you do a lot of negative karma then you go to what is called hell narak hmm? and there also you spend all the the fruit of that karma which means you undergo a lot of suffering and then you again you come back so it's all about coming back to bhu and generating fresh karma here so this is called the what is it called bhu lok or the karma bhumi where you generate karma phal now karma phal includes your actions your thoughts everything that you do with the body mind complex has a certain effect and according to the positivity or negativity of that effect you kind of travel your your subtle body travels subtle body means what sukshma sharir sukshma sharir it includes which koshas tell me which one living annamaya living annamaya yeah sukshma yeah but not the causal body annamaya yeah pranamaya manomaya and vijnanamaya kosh so gross body is annamaya kosh subtle body is pranamaya manomaya and vijnanamaya <coughs> and causal body is ananda ananda mai kosh now the popular concept is the sukshma sharir and of course the causal sharir and self they move to different realms of existence according to your karma so heaven and hell are not the only places there are higher lokas suppose here you have generated very good karma but have no desire for the fruits of actions then you will go to the satya lok tapa lok these places where you can take uh, forward your sadhana not necessarily that you have a desire for bhog experiences in life you have desire for higher things like the knowledge of god the knowledge of the self so obviously you are not going to go to heaven you are not going to go to swarga lok because that is only a bhoga bhumi isn't it so then where do you go you are supposed to go to tapa lok satya lok these places and suppose you have had realization here on bhu in bhu obviously very good karma and realization then you go straight to brahma lok hiranya garbha or what is called sagun brahma lok the realm of sagun brahman so you have your kailash and vaikuntha and ramkrishna lok and all as extensions there according to the your devotion to your ishta devata you go to his particular lok so these are all worlds of sojourn according see these all according to dvaita philosophy because you think body mind complex is real the three shariras are real then time also is real space also is real so you are supposed to be traveling hmm so see actually speaking as long as we are identified with body and mind this holds according to your karma you get your place so once you reach uh, this brahma lok after that one can even go into nirgun brahma lok nirakar lok that is even yogis gnanis they all go there or you want to enjoy devotion to the ishta devata in sagun brahma lok you can be there whatever you want wherever you want to go you can go but this is only from the standpoint of dvait vedant according to advait vedant can consciousness go anywhere tell me even space you consciousness is not in space and time space and time are in consciousness so there's no movement in time and space so actually you don't go anywhere Th- these experiences can impinge on your consciousness and make you learn the lessons you have to learn that's the idea so actually speaking you see now suppose you are moving from point a to point b your body is moving isn't it your mind may be anywhere <laughs> and your consciousness does it also move from point a to point b in your consciousness you are positing a body through a vritti through a thought in your mind and you have posited a point a and point b can i give you another example this appears little <laughs> going over your head see now this there's this glass of water hmm 
This glass has water in it. It also has space. You can't see. Now suppose I move this glass from here to here. Glass mode and water mode. Space also moved? No. In fact, glass and water moved in space. Space accommodates the glass and water and enables movement. Your consciousness enables the movement of things. They, ha they are happening in your consciousness, but your consciousness itself does not move. So then there are no worlds of sojourn. According to Advait Vedant, this is. If you have moved to that level of consciousness, there is no movement for you. Because then, are you getting it? Time and space are in you. You are not in time and space. So please understand things correctly. Huh? Otherwise, see, all through our history, Dvaita Vedantas, Advaita Veda, all at loggerheads with each other because we all think in one particular way. You must see the whole picture and then understand your position there. If I am strongly identified with body and mind and have only a personality sense, no sense of self, I am verily going to travel because I believe I am the body. Are you getting it? Yes. Mm. So you better know where all you can travel. Mm. Just like how here <laughs> you plan your travel, you can plan your afterlife travel also. And it's very real. As long as you think you are a person, a personality encased in a body and mind. According to your karma here, your body will go. Uh, not body, sorry. The sukshma sharir, the subtle body and the causal body. They will travel. But from the standpoint of consciousness, there is no travel. So if you are identified with that, no more worlds of sojourn for you. Whatever is there is here. The extreme poles of your mental consciousness are the heavens and the hells. So this idea, let a, you must digest it and understand that right here, that means I must rise to my full capability of having been born a human being. You know, the glory of the human being is you can transcend the body-mind complex. You can transcend bodily needs and mental needs, psychological needs and step into self-knowledge. You know, a human being is the only animal on the planet which walks erect. You may say chimpanzees also walk erect. No, very briefly. Then they stoop. Why have you been given the ability to walk erect on this planet? Because your spinal cord, your spine is straight. It moves like this upward so that your energies can be lifted upward. Which means you can become deeply conscious by the commitment of your vital energies, by the upward movement of your vital energies. But if we waste that vital energy only in body consciousness and something, then you live just like an animal. Only those needs, that's all. So you see, human evolution is inbuilt within the human psychophysical system. Verily, this human being, this man can become a god by transcending his limitations here. The equipment is given to us. The human body is a mechanism for that and that is why you are the crown of creation. Isn't it? You are at the peak of the evolution. And not, not just in the sense of survival of the fittest, you know, <laughs> and adaptation, not just in terms of that. That's just to do with physical evolution and it applies mainly to the animal world. But in terms of higher evolution, this very consciousness, your consciousness can become divine. Thakur used to say this, you know, Manush ki kaum ga ananter chinta korte pare. Is a human being a small thing? He can think of the infinite. Yes, which means you are no small creature on earth. Infinite potential is there in all of us. Only it remains untapped. Without knowledge, you can't tap your potential. Upanishad is giving you the knowledge of your true being. Your unchanging being. Please see, body, mind will keep changing throughout your life. So your personality sense will keep changing. At different times, you will appear and play different roles to different people. 
where is a sense of continuity within you? Tell me. If you think in, only in terms of body and mind, you are just a bundle of change. Only continuity, only thing which provides continuity is your consciousness, your, your self. So that's why Advait Vedanta says that there is this undercurrent of pure being running, like a common denominator to all your experiences. When you identify with it, you go beyond physical and mental experiences. And if you just stay at the body and mind level, limited experiences, that's all. So to break limitations is Vedant. That's why it's the song of freedom, isn't it? That's how Swamiji defined it. So please understand the afterlife is very true. First point, there is life after death. Secondly, what remains after death? You verily remain over, just the body falls. Thirdly, do I travel and go elsewhere? Yes, of course. <laughs> as long as you are identified with body and mind, you travel. And there are wonderful realms where you would really wish to travel. You have heard of Golok, Ramakrishna Lok, Kailash. Who wouldn't want to be there? <laughs> yes, you can go wherever you want. Like right here, you can go to Kailash, you know. Some people are planning next year's trip to Kailash. Whether you can plan even 50 years later where. Do good, sufficient good karma here, you can go wherever you want. Hmm. But I told you, you don't actually travel. Your consciousness does not travel anywhere. Hmm. Your body may travel. See, suppose you launch a rocket from here to some planet in Andromeda. So now the rocket went and um, whatever was there in the rocket went with it. But space did not go anywhere. Space enabled the movement of rocket from point A to point B. So also your consciousness enables your experiences and identifications and personality etc. etc. It doesn't go anywhere. Once you catch this you will see you would actually even here on Bhu. You are not on Bhulok. If your consciousness is raised, you are verily in the lap of God. Your feet may be on the ground, but your consciousness is elsewhere. And if there's no growth, you know, this, this is verily hell. <laughs> you have seen people saying this. Milton said this, that a man can create a heaven out of hell and a hell out of heaven based on how your mind is, where your consciousness is. So understand these things clearly. You move according to your development, according to your evolution. So it is so very important to gain self-knowledge here and now. Not plan your vacation somewhere in the future, post-mortem. Here and now, self-knowledge. See, if you read the actual uh, Vedanta, of Shankaracharya Swamiji, you will say, you will um, find them telling you, here and now realization is to be had. Not sometime in the future. There is no time. Time is in the mind, in your consciousness. It's not outside your consciousness. So what are you planning? Where are you planning to go? And when? Right now, right here, you should attain to the self that you already are. That you already are. You see, this is a very important thing. Are you ever bereft of consciousness? Tell me. Hmm? Is there any time when you are bereft of consciousness? <coughs> no. Even to say I was unconscious for that period of time, you must have been there. In some kind of a subliminal way. Which you can't, couldn't track. But you are always there. So nothing is outside your consciousness. So then there is no real travel in time or space. But you must awaken first to the idea of self for this understanding to come. Then you will, then naturally what will be our aim? Here and now I have to gain this knowledge. Not Krama Mukti, Jivan Mukti. Here and now, in this life. Not even in this life, this second. Right now. Because 
the self is shining in all its brightness right now mm. right here enabling my mind to think of all this and do kathopanishad right now it is there i have misplaced my sense of identity i have misplaced my sense of identity is this true hmm so this is what is called adhyas superimposition placing something where it does not belong see now if i place uh, some my spectacles on this book it is a kind of imposition but if i mistake my spe spectacles for the book it is superimposition misplacing identity i have misplaced my identity into body and mind i have no sense of self and i think i am body and mind see no idea of self is bad enough and on top of that i am identified strongly only as a body mind personality complex that is the cause for all our troubles according to vedant so you are constantly in the cycle of birth death this after life all this chakra hmm? according to your karma all this applies then because i have misplaced my i sense on something which is constantly changing so this has to be that's why you know the liberation of in vedant is of the nature of knowledge is this right hmm? why is it of the nature of knowledge because our problem is ignorance nothing has actually happened i have misplaced my sense of identity on body and mind it's my own doing see in a place like this i tell you where there's so much of quietness and stillness hmm? just check out and see the contents of your consciousness or mind the only common factor or uh, the thing which persists is your i am sense i am this and that and such and such and my personality i am a doctor or i am a engineer or i am a teacher all that is secondary just i am is primary this sense of pure being indicates the atman so you must catch this in first person hmm? not through some book or some lecture or something like that in the stillness of spaces like these these are consecrated spaces in the stillness you should you should catch this only the i am is true the rest is superimposed it's born out of my thought and once you catch this you will see the the amness there is the self so it's a sharp insight into the nature of reality that that is what this investigation brings so you see the path of uparishad is the path of deep inquiry and meditation if here you don't do this what is the point tell me hmm? here generate the sanskars for this once you have repeated experience of this you will find this is the most important literature on the planet upanishads because they are talking about my real nature not what i appear to the world but what i am and that then clearly you will see what the meaning of life is what the meaning of an after life is actually speaking from the standpoint of the soul there is no death you continue to exist always but in different bodies according to your karma and from the standpoint of your consciousness there is absolutely no change in you it's just like you know you passed through so many homes without getting attached to any bus you are as you are Haku said this you remember hmm? once he said to mother after after his passing on what has happened after all it's like moving from one room to another see this is the experience of a realized soul after all what has happened the i am was there i am continues to be and i am will exist over the essence of that amness being is 
called the Atman. Pure existence or pure consciousness. You are that. So all these scriptures are constantly telling you that. How long will you pose as something else? Ultimately all have to come to this. So Upanishads are provide very uh, strong and wonderful pointers towards your true nature. So the story of Kathopanishad also, you know, it's like this. Uh, I told you, it. once you have understood the Vedantic idea of life, death, after life, then you will understand, you will appreciate this story. Hmm? See, this is a story of a very young boy called Nachiketa. The Upanishad starts with this story. Ushanna hmm? Vaivaja Shravasa Sarva Veda Samdadav Tasya Nachiketa Nama Putrasa Which means there was a Rishi called Vajashravas and he had a son called Nachiketa. The Rishi was well versed in the Vedas, very uh, scholarly and he was a Rishi. Hmm? So this Nachiketa was a very bright boy, youngster, he's hardly 12 years old. But so intelligent and so, you know, uh, a, a boy of unshaking will. Very, very committed to whatever he did. So one day he saw that his father was performing a huge sacrifice, yajna. Yajna was the yoga of the Vedic age. Right? Hmm? So this sage is performing a yajna and as part of the dakshina, gifts which are given at the end of the yajna, he is giving out cows to Brahmins. Now this boy notices that the cows he is giving are all, you know, very old, incapable of yielding milk, weak. Then he thinks, how can one give such gifts? See, don't think that, oh, this Vajashrava is no good Rishi. No, 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 actually he was a very big Rishi. In this particular sacrifice, it so happened that his gifts happened to be like this. Hmm. So he is giving out these cows and then the boy is really uh, getting angry looking at this. Hmm. So, out of a sense of irritation, he goes and asks the father. Means he, he can't like straight away say, how can you give such gifts? So, he says, to whom will you give me? He says that. And uh, the father also gets equally irritated. Because, you know, in such a situation, like how, you know, sometimes it, it happens, the father will say, oh, you go to hell. <laughs> so, like that, he says, I give you to Yava. Go get lost. So then the story goes that this child, Nachiketa, actually goes to the land of Yama, which means he dies and he goes to uh, Yamlok and there he has to wait at the gates for three days and three nights and uncared for, nobody uh, sort of invited him in or saw to his needs because they didn't know who he was, they didn't uh, like, he's not even a Rishi, he's just some, somebody loitering there. So nobody paid attention and he steadily stood there for three days and three nights. So when Yama came, Yama is the lord of death. Okay, in the Hindu pantheon, you know Yama. So he he went around on his rounds and he came back after three days and three nights. And then he sees Nachiketa and feels very guilty. He says, you are the son of a Brahmin, a Rishi. And I made you stand here and wait for me for three days and three nights, which is a sin on my part. Hmm? So you, I, I give you three boons. Ask me whatever you want. Hmm? So then now Nachiketa asks him, see, few things you have to notice here. He's only a small boy, Nachiketa. He didn't turn back. And he's after knowledge. You'll see this. Hmm? And very steady. And so the first boon he says, I want is, see, when I go back, my father should accept me. <laughs> Once I finish my conversation with you and I get knowledge from you and I go back, my father should not think I'm a bhoot or a ghost or something because I visited you and went back. He should accept me as, as his son. And Yama says, Tathastu, this is what will happen. Then second boon, he says, I want to learn about that particular sacrifice which will take me to heaven. So then that sacrifice method was taught to him. It's called the Nachiketa sacrifice only. And in uh, uh, addition to that, a bonus was given to him, a, a golden necklace. Hmm? A beautiful necklace also was given. The sacrifice was taught to him. So all this was given. This was second boon. 
then the third boon he say yama says now please ask me the third boon and relieve me from this and then nachiketa says you know uh, some people say that with death everything ends and some people say no the soul persists after death there is an after life tell me the truth about this yeyam prete vichikitsa manushye astiti eke nayam astiti chaike etad vidya anushishta stvayaham varana mesha varastritiyah which means i want to get this knowledge please tell me who is a better person i can ask tell me yama you are the god of death tell me if there is an after life and then yama is shaken with this question and says look my child you ask me anything else <laughs> take all this i will offer you whatever you want kama naam kama bhajam karomi which means any desire you want thousand fold multiplied i will give you take all this i will give you lands and make you king and give you so many wives and so many chariots and so much gold and grandchildren and and nachiketa is very very firm he says no no i don't want anything of this See, this is the caliber required for Upanishadic study. You must know the limitation of sense experience and mental experience. Then only you will get interested in the soul, self. So he says, "Sarvendriya nam jarayanti tejaha." All this that you have offered me, they take away the vigor of my senses and mind. I won't accept it. So look at his sense of discernment, Vivek. all this that you are offering me see how how many can say this all this that you are offering me take away my tej this is what sense experiences do but we are such slaves to it that we don't realize this they take away your vigor vitality it is to preserve vitality that that is why all the self control and vairagya and all this to preserve vitality because vitality leads to higher awareness so at once he says this hmm? yes you must know the equations between vitality and awareness if you have high vitality which means you commit energies to higher levels higher chakras or whatever you you may think of vitality will be preserved if you can do that higher awareness will automatically unfold in the mind which means your perceptions will become totally clear ultimately advait advait gyan is a kind of intense unitary perception when will it come only when higher awareness has dawned which means vitality has been preserved so you see nachiketa is saying this right in the beginning sarvendriyanam jarayanti tejah all these things which you are offering me will drain my vital energies i don't want it see we don't see things in this way that is why all the greed and passion for life without understanding what life is hmm? so this little boy is teaching us great lessons and when he says that then again yama is taken aback again he offers him all sorts of things and nachiketa rejects them then yama says see you alone are fit for this knowledge because being so young still you have shaken off this uh, delusion of the human mind to find comfort in objects and so i will give you this this knowledge saying this see this is the story he plunges into self knowledge atma vidya and the entire upanishad is going to give you wonderful ideas about the nature of the self which means the nature of the atman that's why this is called atma gyan atma vidya spiritual knowledge knowledge of you as spirit only the upanishads give you this your your true identity unchanging identity and what is the result of this knowledge you overcome this puzzle of life and death and you live a full life because i told you full vitality is full awareness which is full life 
compromised vitality is low awareness which is poor life am i right see these formulas or equations you should and please give it to your children this is the signs of consciousness you can we know science about everything in the external world but we don't know the signs of our consciousness vedanta is the signs of consciousness and yoga is the technology of consciousness because it is giving you the methods towards the realization of the science so this is a mandatory you know not optional to any life which wants to bloom fully don't think only one course on this or something like that or one retreat in pangot <laughs> this is just starting point and this is just shravan the most important thing is manan and nididhyasan nididhyasan never compromise on that because that will give you the first person idea or experience of what we are discussing awareness can never be thought of conceived in the mind because your mind is functioning in awareness but you can know it through meditation meditation is the only way can you think of it tell me now if i say pure consciousness think of it <laughs> what what uh, thought you get tell me you can't bring it into the thought yes. plane into thoughts it is not a vritti of your mind if it was a vritti it wouldn't be brahma vidya it would be vritti gyan so understanding this you must learn to transcend the mind only meditation will make you do it it is only in the hours of meditation that you use a very subtle pure vritti to transcend the vritti to identify with the object of meditation completely to unite your consciousness with divine consciousness so wo ye kya cheez hai you can only know if through meditation yoga yoga na gnatavyo yoga yoga pravartate you can know yoga only through yoga and you can progress in yoga proceed in yoga only through yoga so don't try to understand these things just by thought and lectures and youtube and all that through meditation in spaces like this you see here in the himalayas any time you watch the mountains they appear still and meditating you watch any tree it is like still and meditating there is a kind of all pervasive stillness so they are teaching you to still your mind and once you do that you will yourself understand the nature of your awareness it has nothing to do with your mind eh? see these are all stunning truths isn't it and this has nothing to do with your mind no matter what your brain science says explore it and see for yourself hmm? today the big debate is going on no consciousness is in the brain see are you thinking of consciousness or are you thinking in consciousness tell me Mm-hmm. you are thinking in consciousness that itself means your consciousness is not in your brain you are doing brain science in your consciousness consciousness is so fundamental so subtle and pervasive that you miss it and you feel you will understand it in some way you will never understand it <laughs> because it is not a vritti so don't try to bring it into vritti gyan see every science has its own methods the signs of consciousness the method is meditation mm. please see the lives of all these great ones who have had first hand experience of these things it was a meditative life it was a life where the senses and the mind were turned within so this upanishad only will tell you paran chikhani vetrana swayambhu tasmat paran pashyati nantaratman कश्चित धीरा प्रत्यगात्मा नमेक्ष आवृत्त चक्षु अमृतत्व मिच विच मीन्स युअर सेन्सेस आर गियर्ड टू मूव आउटवर्ड यू ना द सेन्सेस आर कॉन्स्टंटली इन सर्च ऑफ सेन्स ऑब्जेक्ट्स प्लीज सी सी लेट मी आस्क यू अ फ्यू क्वेश्चन हियर टू हेल्प यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस डू यू हियर युअर हार्ट बीट बाय योर सेल्फ नो वेन इट्स थम्पिंग वेन यू आर रन गॉन ऑन अ रन देन मे बी यू हियर अ बिट 
but you require a stethoscope to hear your heartbeat why you know your ears are turned outward you can hear what is going on in the valley there one bird is chirping you can hear that but your heart is thumping your your heart is beating your blood is gushing forth in your veins you can't hear all that this is what is called paranchi khani vitri your senses are turned outward they only track outer things they don't track what is happening within yourself and your mind is all the more turned outward so then awareness kaha hai kya hai kya cheez hai wo cheez kaise ho sakti hai so the method i am telling you the methodology for this science is you have to turn inward if that sanskar is not there with you can't really have a grip on vedant and if that sanskar is there you don't need a book or a lecture to tell you that it's your own consciousness how can you not know it hmm so the kathopanishad in way see all each mantra of the kathopanishad is very very powerful i'm telling you and uh, giving you a lot of uh, insights into the nature of consciousness pure consciousness into the nature of how it functions through this body mind complex and it is also giving you examples allegories a number of uh, uh, you can say uh, um, not not like metaphors to help you understand this these are not like uh, verses huh? they are not like that they are mantras which means manana trayate each mantra it will help you transcend the limitations of your mind so you must approach vedant like that with deep shraddha shraddha van labhate gnanam every mantra is imp- important even if it is not done here every mantra you must pursue it at home keep in touch with vedant i am telling you this is a literature which will energize you from within enliven you from within it's already doing it you don't realize it so every morning if you dip into it you know it's like ganga snan every morning if you go do ganga snan how refreshed you will get and plus all the sins will go isn't it this is this is the bhava ganga you must dip into every morning start the day with upanishads i am telling you you will you will shine anywhere you will stand apart because it will vital he vitalize you from within but if this is not there i am telling you this silly identification with body mind pursuing all nonsensical goals the whole life will go in that no clarity of understanding and awareness will be there tell me what do you gain by that hmm? diving into this in the morning then go out and do your work do, do what you have to do do your duties and you will see a different perspective to life so this is a very very energizing literature hmm? whatever vivekananda used to say this what will happen uh, with this knowledge a student will be a better student an engineer will be a better engineer a doctor will be a better doctor and without this knowledge sab faka is meaningless so we will dive into this now i will take up one or two mantras and we will end the session here so see um rain has started i don't know <laughs> see na uh, please go to mantra number 26 this is what i told you the pre condition for the understanding of vedant shobhava martyasya yadantakai tat sarvendriyanam jarayanti tejah अभी सर्व जीवित अल्पमेव तवैव वाह स्तव नृत्य गीते नचिकेता इज टेलिंग यमा ओ डेथ एफिमरल आर दीज एंड दे वेस्ट अवे द विगर ऑफ ऑल द ऑर्गन दैट अ मैन हैज ऑल लाइफ विदाउट एक्सेप्शन इज शॉर्ट लेट दीज वेहीकल्स बी योर्स अ लोन लेट द डांसेस एंड सॉन्ग्स बी योर्स न वित्ते न तर्पणीय मनुष्यो लप्स्यामहे वित्त मद्राक्ष्म चेतवा जीविष्यामो यावदी शिष्यसी वरस्तु मे वरणीय स एव 
man is not to be satisfied with wealth now that we have met you we shall get wealth we shall live as long as you will rule but the boon that is worth praying for me is that alone which is the knowledge of the self so this kind of metal and commitment is required you know earlier times to study vedan you were given sadhan chatushtai you remember that hmm? some of you must be knowing the preliminary requirements for the study of vedan vivek vairagya shat sampati mumukshutvam otherwise you will not know what is being said so here also this is being reiterated by saying uh, the fact that nachiketa denies so many things itself means shows his fitness for this knowledge so the ability of the mind to keep aside what is not absolutely necessary and pursue and invest into what is absolutely required this capacity is required for vedanta so don't tell me we have a full time job and a family to support how do i do all this no time so don't ask me such questions what you hold to be important you will do what you don't find important you will not do so if you are finding time for this that means your priorities are clear so in the q and a session i don't want questions like this ah, there's no time <laughs> then the, see people who ask me like that i tell them then don't do <laughs> because anyway you will not do if you have no time you mu- you must make time in fact you always make time you know ta- what is time from the standpoint of your mind the clarity of your awareness gives you time if it's jumbled up and uh, with a whole lot of things you will never find time hmm? just like how you clean up your room every day clean up the mind you will find time otherwise it will get wasted on unnecessary things if there's nothing to do something you will keep brooding over or worrying about so all this is uh, you know mind made mind made life <laughs> not the real life so this must stop uh, if you have high goals like this no every thought will be analyzed and placed where it should be placed and no high goals then the thought energy is drained away and stop all this uh, you know all kinds of impressions getting into your mind just like see uh, some people treat mind like waste paper basket anything can be put in you can't afford to do that those who pursue vedant cannot do that why practically i am telling you how to do all this all sorts of things all the time if it keeps getting into you you can't do vedant so don't treat your mind like waste paper basket you will focus only on things which actually matter see this will contribute to the purity of mind hmm because all energy gets drained away when you keep on thinking something stupid keep seeing something stupid you will become stupid finally yes <laughs> the intellect will wane away i'm telling you your awareness will diminish if you keep seeing silly stupid things hmm? so this is one very it's in the chandogya upanishad can you tell me what is that verse knowing what one knows the book no ahara shuddhau sattva shuddhi yeah. <coughs> what ahar you take ahar is not just what you eat what you take in through yeah. the senses all of it should be pure otherwise because it's ahar for your mind what you take in through the senses ahara shuddhau sattva shuddhi sattva shuddhau dhruva smriti if the ahar is pure sattva will be manufactured in your mind and if sattva is manufactured your memory will stay very steady the actual things you which are to be done you will remember otherwise the essential is forgotten you keep pursuing something which hardly matters so the real intelligence gets developed only if there is a sattvic life please understand so these are all preliminaries for our study of kathopanishad otherwise it will not go in i'm telling you hmm? so what are the preliminaries sattva 
sattvic life regulation of thought process concentrating on scriptures i told you every day one dip into vedant hmm see morning hours the first hour of every morning should go in spiritual pursuit it will energize your entire system hmm either do meditation or read something good or take a good walk with uh, chanting something like that somehow keeping close to this and meditation these are the fundamental requirements for the study of vedant hmm so we'll end it here and take up q and a hmm om shanti shanti shanti